Hey guys, Hardly Brief Dan here with another episode of the Unity Make an RPG series. Today we're going to finish up working on our inventory system. I'm going to quickly go over a couple things that you guys can do to go and add on to the inventory system. And then I'll basically give you an outline of what's going to be coming up over the next few videos. So let's get started. Uh, I'm in the same project that we've been working on, the same inventory system. Nothing's changed. Uh, I'll do a quick review here. Last time we actually got the items to drag and uh, be placed properly. So if I click this sword, I'm dragging it around the screen. I've let go of the mouse. I can click another spot and it puts that item there. And same thing with the armor here. So what now? Well, there's two problems. Uh, and the first problem is if I click an icon and I click on the one that's full, uh, it gets rid of it. Uh, and we don't want that behavior. You might want it, uh, but I don't think most of us want that. So that's one thing we'll talk about. But the first thing we're going to talk about is if I click an empty slot here and drag it, we have an empty icon, and we don't want that. So let's start fixing those problems. I'm going to open up Visual Studio. I'm in the Selected Item class here, and I'm on the On Drag method. This is where we want to be. This is that uh, interface method that we uh, are using. It's called Public Void On Drag. Make sure you're in there. We have this if statement where we're checking to see if being dragged is false, which is a boolean a boolean value that's located in our inventory window class, okay? And we're making sure that's false before we attempt to drag. Now, if that is false, what we want to do is also make another check. And we want to check to make sure that this slot that we just clicked, its name does not equal to empty, right? So if it is equal to empty, we don't want this to run because that means the slot's empty and we shouldn't be dragging anything because nothing's in it, right? So we're just doing a quick check. We're saying, hey, is being dragged false and is this slot name empty? If that's true, or it's not empty, that, if that's true, then we can go ahead and run our dragging uh, methods that's located in the inventory window class. Now I'll press play in Unity. I, went, I controlled S for save before I came in. I'm in Unity now. I'm going to click an empty slot and try to drag it. And you see it doesn't work. We're not getting any errors anymore. It just it it knows that we can't drag anything because nothing exists in it. Okay, so we got that working very simple, and we're going to move on to the next problem, which is when I click this icon here, uh, it replaces it. So what we're going to add now is a very generalized or a general swapping method. Uh, it's not a full on swap. It basically what it is is when you click the icon and click on one that's full, it's going to swap it's going to replace the dragging icon to the one that you've just clicked. Uh, and I probably didn't explain that well, so let's just go ahead and code it. Uh, so what we're going to do first is in our inventory window class, we're actually going to add a new pu public method. Uh, so in our inventory window class, below this return item icon method, we're going to create a public, nope, not a partial, a public uh, void, and we're going to call this swap item. And the first thing we're going to create is a member, a variable here that we can use only in this method. So it's going to be of type base item. And we're going to call this swap item. Okay. And we're going to say player inventory. And we're going to do a parse. So we're going to do int dot parse. And you might be asking, well, what are we parsing? Well, we're going to be parsing a game object, and we're, that game object is going to be the slot that we click on. So we actually need to go ahead and pass in a game object, and we'll call it slot. So this method will be called when we click on an, I, an item, an item slot, and that method will pass in the slot that we clicked. Right. So now we need to do slot in the item or in the int parse. We need to do slot dot name. So when we click, when we pass the slot in, it's going to send its name to this parse where we'll get the item and we'll store it in this uh, variable called swap item. The next thing we need to do is replace the image, right? So now we've clicked on the icon uh, and we want to move the images. We want to swap the images. And the way we're going to do that is using that return item icon function. We're going to do slot dot transform dot get child, which we've used before now. Uh, several times. We're going to get the first child, which is the item icon child, and we're going to get its game object, we're going to get component, and we're going to get its image component, and then we're going to say sprite. So we're going to get sprite, all that code just gets the sprite we need, and we're going to set it equal to our return item icon, and this is going to be the item drag being dragged. So 
we're dragging an item. We click on an item that, or a slot that's occupied. We want to swap the sprites. So the sprite that needs to be in that place is the item being dragged sprite. So that's how we're gonna that's how we're gonna get that. Uh, now we're going to do. Now we need to change the name of the slot. So the slot name that we just clicked on needs to be the same slot name that we stored in a variable up here. Uh, and hopefully this, hopefully you kind of understand what I'm doing, but. I'll try to explain it uh, when it's finished or as we go on. So basically, we're going to get this game object slot's name that we just clicked on, and we're going to change its name to the name of the item being dragged, which we stored in the slot name variable uh, when we begin dra when we begin dragging. And I'll show you that now. So when we begin dragging, we sent we sent in a string, a name, a variable of type string, and we labeled it name, and we set it equal to this. Uh, private member called slot name and slot name is the name is the name of the slot being dragged meaning a one to two in string format uh, and we can use the same variable all the way down in our swap item function here to set when we swap an item to set that slot name and that's what we're doing there now the next thing we need to do is set the item being dragged since we're swapping items we need to set that to the swap item uh, which again is the item that we just clicked on. So this is where we're physically replacing the object or the item. Uh, and then we're going to do dragged icon. We get, need to change the icon that's being dragged now to this new item. So we do dragged icon get component image and dot sprite and we're going to set that equal to the return item icon and we're going to pass in the item being dragged now. The new item that's being dragged, right? The last thing we need to do before this function, or this method's done, we're going to say slot name is going to be equal to a player inventory dot uh, find index. Okay, so find index uh, is a method that is used for list that you can pass in some sort of check. Uh, so basically, you're basically supposed to pass in an object, and then it searches that list for that object, and it returns the index value of that object. So here we're going to say find index, and we're going to use the uh, equal the arrow symbol um, equals and then arrow symbol to do it the format so you do X uh, equal to and then the greater symbol so it's pointing to it and we're saying X or excuse me X yeah X is going to be equal to this is where your boolean statement comes in so X is equal to item being dragged um, and I'll explain this too and then we need to set that to a string because that returns of this player inventory dot find index returns a number and we want to convert that number that integer value to a string and this is what the two string does uh, now let me explain this a little bit more because I was very brief about it basically player inventory here is a list a type list we're calling the method find index uh, which is like an extension method of player inventory of the type and we're creating this variable called X uh, which is an object based item okay and this can be anything. It does not have to be X. It can be Q. It can be item. It can be whatever you want. X is just arbitrary. It's random. So I'm saying X, and then you use this equal signs and a greater symbol, and then you say X. Then you create a boolean. So X, maybe uh, you want to compare item names and not just the whole entire item. Maybe you want to compare item type. It's up to you how you want to find the index of whatever item you're looking for. But in our case, we want to look for this item being dragged that's in our inventory because it's its own instance of it. Uh, we want to get the index value, and then we want to convert it to a string and store it in slot name. Hopefully, you understand that. Hopefully, I explained it decently. Uh, if not, leave uh, you know leave a remark in the comments, and maybe I can help you there, or maybe someone else who's watched the video can help you. Okay. Uh, so, anyways, we got that done. Now let's control S to save, uh, not highlight everything, and go back into selected item. In selected item class, we want to add a couple if another if statement. Uh, basically, if the item's being dragged here. We want to do another check, and we're going to say, "Hey, if item is being dragged, that's great, but we need to check to see if the item name is empty." So we're going to say this, or we need to check to see if the slot's name is empty. So we'll do slot empty. We're going to say not equals to empty. So if the slot is not equals to empty, that means it's occupied. There's an item in it, and we need to do our perform our swap. Else, well, else we're going to run this code that we were running before. So I'm just going to. Highlight it all, control X to cut it, and control V to paste it, control S to save. And in here, we can use this variable in inventory window that we cached earlier, and we can, oh, excuse me, we can paste it in there, 
double click it, control C to copy, control, control V to paste, and we can say, well, what do we need to do? Well, we need to do inventory window dot swap item, and that takes a game object, which is this dot trans or game object, which is the slot. Controls to save. Let's hope to God that we don't have any ants or errors, any exceptions. It looks like we don't. It looks like we're doing pretty well. So let's go ahead and press play and see how our handy handy work or craft has worked. So when I drag an item, that still works, right? Or drag an empty slot, nothing happens. When I click this icon now, I have the equipment with me. I'm gonna click this sword and it swapped it. Right? So now we just swap the items. And you can kind of tell over here we've changed the name to one and zero. Let me press play again restart it all and we'll look at the name so item 29 is the sword here and it's also in position one I click this and drag it and you can see here in the hierarchy it's gone right because we're storing it on our dragging icon now I'm going to click the armor and you're going to see the zero change to one the sword remember is item 29 and it's going to be stored here so I click it and you see item 29 one is replaced and we're looking at the correct items now if you don't fully believe me, you can do a debug statement and you can check out and see the item type and see that we're actually getting the correct item. Uh, but just remember, look at the item name, look at the information that's being provided for you and you can tell that the swap is actually happening. Uh, so hopefully you learned something with that. Um, that's ba that's all I really wanted to do with the inventory system. Uh, we've we spent quite a bit of time on it. I really would like to move on and do some other cool projects. Um, and But I don't want to leave you guys hanging. I want to give you some ideas of what you can do. Uh, to add on to this and one of those things is stackable inventory if you want to create a stackable inventory all you have to do uh, is come back into this on pointer down and when you click it you can check the item maybe you have a boolean in your base item that is stackable if that's true and you already have that item there you can just add on to it and you can add like a little number value here that shows that incrementing as you stack items uh, it's all about logic and if statements and, and uh, making sure something exists and doesn't exist, and if that does exist, hey, can can you stack this item? If you can stack this item, then stack it, increase a number, which is just you know a GUI object. It's it's not super hard, and hopefully we've gone through most of the more difficult things here that you guys can really add on to your to your own projects. Uh, but besides that, uh, besides you know maybe doing stacking inventory, uh, maybe uh, the same thing. Maybe you want to split the stack stacked inventory you can add some sort of other method where you on click with a shift you know so you have an on pointer down with a shift click in there uh, if you have that then you can split the inventory I think that's how World of Warcraft does it or um, maybe you want to or actually let's briefly discuss um, when I click an icon here you know I'm dragging it how do I get it to go somewhere else well you can cast a ray outside the tip of your mouse and point it to something else or you can have another uh, inventory window here or a crafting window that works with the inventory window it's really up to you uh, and again you know maybe we can come back to it in a later date if you guys got more questions we can cover it uh, but that's a bulk of what I wanted to do in this video I do want to say in the next couple videos uh, we're going to be looking at coroutines the event system in unity and how we can create a awesome time a daytime manager basically for a day-night cycle that's customized to your project. So hopefully you like the video. Please like, comment, subscribe. The likes really help me uh, get noticed on YouTube. I really appreciate all the feedback you guys are always giving me, and I'll talk to you guys next time.